We're always keen to undertake new adventures in Frostgrave, and with The Red King, we've got the first supplement to the game's recent second edition. It's written by game and world creator Joe McCulloch, published by Osprey Games, and within the vibrantly coloured softback cover are 96 pages of new rules, stats, and campaign details. The introduction, across pages 4 and 5, describes the motivation and goals behind this supplement. Then we get to the first chapter, The Invasion. It, the chapter, not the invasion itself, starts on page 7, and takes us back in time, through the millennia, all the way to the cataclysmic demise of Felstad, long before it would gain its new name of Frostgrave. It turns out that as the city was experiencing its rapid destruction, a small cabal of the city's wizards took a self-serving action to guarantee their survival. In doing so, they made a pact with a demon, the book's eponymous Red King, and they damned the already rather damned city of Frostgrave to a whole new doom. So, we get back to Frostgrave present, the Red King, he's coming, and he wants to merge the frozen city with his own pocket dimension. We have to congratulate him. We didn't actually think that Frostgrave could get much worse, but somehow Mr. King's found a way. So, the first additional rules arrive here, reality cracks, and these are used in just about every game that's set in the time of the Red King. The longer a game runs, the more likely it is that cracks will appear, and the tables to generate this on page 10 are used to determine what happens and when it happens. Once reality's torn asunder, the battlefield will change. Joe's got a cheekily named string theory note that details how you can use length of string to divide the table in different ways, and there are little box outs with commentary from the author throughout the book that really add to the overall understanding of things. The Reality Cracks list has 20 outcomes across pages 11 to 18. These are incredibly varied. Gravity can change, impacting movement. Space can explode, moving and injuring those around. A cloven hoof might descend from above and wreck those below. Or reality can shift spatially, forming a polyhedron that players must navigate. It's a varied, exciting, unusual list of options, and this section, as with the rest of the book, is illustrated with fine art and atmospheric scenes of miniatures doing battle. Next, on page 18, we get into Ragged Warbands. This covers how warbands will, once the seventh scenario in this book has been played, become isolated, and how they must deal with injuries, treasure and recruitment in different ways to normal. This is more good stuff, adding extra tension to proceedings, but we do have a couple of little quibbles to bring up. Um, as within the Frostgrave second edition rulebook, there are a box out here in, uh, in blue. These are snippets that add an eclectic tonal um, and narrative tease to the book, little taste of the background. They largely work, well the text does anyway, but we find the sharp edged blue box around it, it's about the least thematic way they could possibly be displayed. It's kind of like these curious tidbits from the Frostgrave world have been presented in a PowerPoint. You know, weirdness like, just a chest full of three-fingered gloves. Or, it was those sisters, you know, the chronomancer girls, cast some spell that gave us all these long beards and then disappeared into the ruins. Little weirdness like that, it deserves better. So, slight, slight problem there, but nothing too major. Also, some of the tables and the way they're laid out, they're huge. They could take up far less width and be compact to take up less space in the book. But, with that said, it's time to get back to the stuff we don't have any kind of quibbles with, and we move into Chapter 2, The Red King, Act 1, which starts on page 24. The voice of the Herald of the Red King is in your wizard's head here, kicking off the book's many scenarios, giving your warband motivation to get active and investigate these unusual new circumstances. Life in the frozen city is at its usual levels of weirdness, but more of the story is gradually revealed to your warband. The Veil of Unreality is a scenario that stands out. It's designed to be played multiple times, with players alternating between control of their warband and the forces of the Red King. In Chapter 3, the Red King Act 2 starts, and after a glorious bit of art on page 32, the story expands further in three more scenarios. As with much of Joe's design work, each scenario has its own elements that bring character and interest. From the special rules, varied treasure and experience gained, to the new berserkers, rut, portals, special characters, and more that you'll include, and we'll talk more about them later when we get to the bestiary, there's loads of things to keep games fresh, exciting, and challenging. Page 42 is the point where the Red King's presence is fully realised, and the book changes up a little bit to reflect that threat. 
the aforementioned Ragged Warbands rules kick in as players attempt to escape a veil that's closing in around the city. We can't help but wonder if Joe might have filled some of his non-tabletop gaming time recently with playing Battle Royale video games. Um, the representation of an ever-decreasing safety zone that's forcing players to a climactic, desperate finish at the centre point, with supplies becoming scarcer, it's very present in that popular genre. Games like PUBG, Fortnite, you might be familiar with them, or your children might be familiar with them. And these all seem to have inspired the Red King's last act. Scenarios 7-12 to 12 cover the player's progress to the centre of the doomed city, and the opposing forces of the Red King get stranger, more elite, and more numerous. Normen join the fun, ethereal tethers make for strange movement options across table edges, and finally you'll reach the ring world of the Red King. Things conclude on page 62 with the Red King epilogue. We're not going to spoil exactly what happens here, but it's a pretty good finish. But the book's not done here. Chapter 6, Treasure, addresses all the new goodies players can get by rolling on the Red King's treasure table. The descriptions of these treasure items run to page 73, and then it's on to artifacts, which are even rarer magical treasures. They go through all the way to page 85. And then it's the final chapter, the bestiary, and it's here that the many new Red King combatants are found. Barbarians can get the blood mark, which then binds them to the Red King. There are burning men, foul horns, key masters and heralds, various shrut. We're not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, maybe we are. Uh, there are a new demon type race who are particularly aware of magic users and will home in on them. And there's the strange null men. Add the creature traits to these baddies and you've got a ton to play with and a great new supplement. A really excellent new book for Frostgrave fans and a fine start to the new edition supplements. This video has been brought to you by WI Prime, Wargames Illustrated Magazine's online members club. View more videos or find out more about WI Prime by following these links.